Hey, Right Writers, Keith Wheeler here back with another video for you. And if you've logged into Amazon KDP in the last week or so, you may have seen this message. We're currently launching changes to help you choose three Amazon store categories for each book based on primary marketplace during setup. While we're making this experience available to all authors, we're no longer accepting requests to add or update categories. Contact us if you're experiencing an issue with your categories and we can help you troubleshoot. Learn more about the categories experience and I'll include a link down in the description below that'll lead you to there. So what does all this mean? Well, what it means is that previous videos I've done, I've shown how you can reach out to Amazon KDP and you can ask them to put your book in up to 10 categories for your book and your ebook. That is no longer the case. Right now, they're not going to be taking any more requests to put your book into the different categories. But the good news is, is you can choose the placement of your categories yourself, and you can put it in three categories. Well, couldn't I do that before? No, before what you were picking was up to two BISAC categories. Now, if you remember, if you've ever used the you know BISAC categories in, in KDP or any other on-demand platform, it's really this, um, it's this international book identification number that is used mainly for librarians and online bookstores to know where to place your book. But it made it very difficult to kind of pick which one worked for your book because it didn't correlate with Amazon. It didn't correlate with the categories that Amazon has. But now we can. And I'm gonna show you in a second exactly how to do that. But first, we need to learn a little bit about the anatomy of a category. So a category has three different parts to it. It has a category. So the category would be like book or ebook. Then it has subcategories. And it may have multiple subcategories, like subcategory, sub subcategories, whatever. And then it's got the placement, which is the final landing spot, the final resting spot of your book. So what does this mean in actual practice? I'll show you. So here's a book that's one of my granddaughter's current favorite books, which is The Wonky Donkey. And if you scroll down to the product details, you'll see under the bestseller rank, the categories, right? We've, we've all seen these before. This is actually your placement. This is the final place that it will be found. But if I click on that, it will bring me to this section right here, right? So this is what the different parts of a category look like. So here is your category. So the category would be books in this particular case. If it was eBooks, it would be eBooks. Then it's children's books. Children's books is your subcategory. Now, most categories have multiple subcategories. And even within a subcategory, usually it's drilled down even more on Amazon because Amazon is all about the customer experience. They want to give them exactly what they're looking for. So in this one, it would be the subcategory would be children's books. And then the sub subcategory would be animals. And then the final placement where it finally lands is farm animals, okay? So this one, this particular book has a category, which they all have, a subcategory, which they all have, but then another subcategory, and then the final placement, okay? So that's how, that, that's, and this whole thing is called a browse path. So, you know, the, the final, where it shows you step by step, that's called the browse path. So how do we actually use this for our books, okay? So one, if you don't know where to put your book, absolutely look up a competitor, uh, something that's similar to your book and see where they're at, you know, see what two or three they have listed and see what their browse path is. See, you know, the category, subcategory, sub subcategories and final placement. So let's go over to Amazon KDP and we're gonna actually do this and show, see how it looks in practice. Right here, I'm on, my, on the first tab, I'm down in the category section. This is where before, we would pick up to two BISAC categories. Again, it might be something very generic or it might be something a little drilled down, but not as drilled down as the placement. And obviously it didn't correlate directly with Amazon KDP. We're gonna go to edit categories and I already have one set up. So I'm just gonna click on add another category. So the first category is gonna be, obviously it's, it's already in books because I'm in that book option. I, you know, I picked book and not ebook on KDP. So that part's already taken care of for me. So now I'm gonna go to the category. This one's gonna be children's books right here. A subcategory would be, let's see. Um, this one is actually about the alphabet. So we're gonna do early learning. Another subcategory within that, it's broken down into basic concepts. And then within that, there's even more subcategories because within basic concepts, there's a lot of different concepts. This book is about the alphabet, but it also has other aspects. 
into it. So the alphabet is one of the, uh, is what I put, picked in my last one, but this one, it also covers opposites. So I'm gonna pick that, okay? And then over here is the placement. So within opposites, the placement is, is it fiction or nonfiction? So in this case, it's fiction because um, it's, yeah, it's fiction. So that would be the placement. So the browse path would be books, children's books, early learning, basic concepts, alphabet, fiction would be the final placement. And then I can add another because I'm allowed up to three, but I'm just gonna stick with these two. Um, I also could remove any one if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna say save categories and we're good to go. So that's how you add it in. Now I will say, it, it can get a bit confusing when it comes to these categories and, and you know what should I do, what shouldn't I do? Well, the good news is, is KDP helps us out there by giving us some tips. They gave us five main tips and the first one is choose accurate categories. Now this may sound obvious, but as I'm probably sure you've seen, if you, you know, looking to, to find categories for your book, sometimes people just put their books in any old category, you know, something completely irrelevant. And I think part of that is because previously it has been thought that, that putting your book in 10 different categories, which is what we've taught previously, that that's the best thing. And so after a while, it gets kind of hard to find, you know, eight, nine, 10 categories. But with the different changes that have been made to the Amazon algorithm, because the algorithm is getting changed all the time, but what they've done is they, they've shown that relevancy, as I've covered before, is the most important. And so it says, choose accurate categories. Choosing categories that accurately describe your book's central topic or storyline helps readers find your book where they expect it to be. They also give the tip to not mix fiction and nonfiction. For example, if you publish a werewolf romance book, choose romance fantasy and not nature animals wolves. Makes sense. Tip number two is to add fewer categories. This is what I was just talking about, how you know before it was thought that, that having your book into 10 categories was the best idea, but as the algorithm changes, again, you wanna be more specific. Less is better. So it says, being selective with fewer categories that relate more specifically to your book helps readers find your book in the area of interest. Our analysis of customer activity on books shows that having more than a few categories decreases the relevancy of those categories and does not improve discoverability. For example, if you publish a historical travel journal from a famous traveler, choose travel, travel writing as a category instead of history world. So if KDP is telling us that less is more, I'm gonna listen to KDP. You know, they know the algorithm better than we do because Amazon doesn't share everything. You know, what I do know about the Amazon algorithm, what they do share, I share with you. But when KDP is telling us things like less is more, you don't need 10 categories anymore. Use three at most, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, they're telling us that, that they've done analysis, they've said it right there, and that they're learning constantly from their users, from their customers, what helps. And of course, the main thing that Amazon cares about is their customers, right? They want their customer experience to be as, as good as it can be, the best possible. And what that means is they're gonna listen to their customers. So if they're listening to their customers because they wanna get more sales, then we should listen to them because they're listening to their customers. The third tip is focus on subcategories. So something we, that I talked about when I was going through the, you know, the anatomy of a category, but you know, categories typically contain subcategories and some subcategories. For example, the history category has subcategories including United States, which has its own subcategories including 19th century. We recommend you focus on the most granular subcategory that relates to your book because we automatically display your book in the top level categories. So for example, the book that I just did, you know, they've, I had it in children's books, but then I also had it in concepts, and then I also had it in opposites. By me putting it all the way down that, that low, that, you know, picking that deep, it's showing up in the opposites, but it's also gonna show up in concepts. It's also gonna show up in children's books. So the more granular you go, it's actually gonna show up in more places. So even though before, you know, we were only picking, we were, we were picking 10, this actually gets us more, more visibility, really, because it's in more accurate subcategories and the categories that go above it. So again, if, Amazon's, if Amazon KDP is telling us to do this, it makes sense. Again, they know the algorithm better than we do. The fourth tip is select eligible categories. 
to ensure a positive customer experience, again, once again, that's what they're interested in, positive customer experience, your book might not be eligible for certain categories. Eligibility depends on a variety of factors, including the availability of a category in the Amazon store and book details, including the primary audience, primary marketplace, and keywords. So if you have your book, for example, if I say that the age range for this is baby to five years old, it's, I'm not gonna be allowed to put it in a category of teen. It doesn't make sense. It's not gonna be relevant. It's gonna confuse my end users. I'm not gonna get as many sales anyway because people that are looking for this type of book wouldn't be looking in teens. So again, it's just, it really is common sense stuff, but unfortunately, I've seen numerous times where people, again, are just putting their books wherever. So again, KDP is, is trying to help us. They're trying to help us make a better customer experience for their customers, which in turn could lead to more sales for us. And the biggest tip that they're giving is give your categories time to perform. After you choose categories for your book, we recommend limiting changes to allow time for your book to gain momentum with readers. Again, readers, end users, customers, whatever you wanna call them, they're focusing on that. Make sure it gives time for the readers to, to see your book, to find it, and, and to say, yeah, this is the right place for it. This is relevant to this category. If you frequently change your categories, historical customer activity for your book may be recalculated based on your new categories, which could impact your sales rank. And then they just add down here an important note that after you add or update your book categories, we will review your changes to ensure we provide a positive customer experience to our customers. We do not tolerate inaccurate or unexpected categories that mislead or manipulate our customers. Again, it's all about the customer. Now, they're not really saying whether it's a human being that's gonna be reviewing it or if it's gonna be a bot, but either way, we know it's gonna be reviewed, and I'm actually hoping that this means that overall the marketplace is gonna be cleaner because it makes things easier for us as authors you know, it's a lot easier to sell if your book is in a category that's relevant, but also if there's other books in there that are relevant. You know, when, when you have a category that has books all over the place, it's very easy for a customer to get into that category, not see what they're looking for and just stop looking, which means they're not gonna find your book. So I'm hoping that this cleans up the Amazon marketplace overall. Now I will say, that one thing that, that is, isn't made 100% clear, but I just wanna clarify for you, is that we're gonna be doing updates to our main marketplace. So my main marketplace is the US, and so my changes are gonna be made to the amazon.com marketplace, and then Amazon will update the other marketplaces that I have my books in automatically. So I don't have to go in and choose you know, three different placements on all the different platforms that I'm, all the different marketplaces that I'm in for Amazon. So they're making it more accurate and they're helping me out by limiting the amount of work I have to do. So overall, I think this is really a really good step in the right direction for cleaning up the marketplace. Now I will be honest, uh, I, I, it's gonna be work, it, you know, cause I gotta go into each, you know, each book that I wanna update um, and, and update the categories that way, but in the end, it's going to be worth it because I, I do it one time. It's going to be more granular, more specific, you know, and it's not going to confuse the algorithm by not knowing, oh, you're in 10 different, you know, categories and placements. I don't know who your end user is because there's not really a, a lot of relevancy compared to all of them. So by only having, you know, three at most, again, it, it helps narrow it down. It helps let the algorithm know this really is what my book is about. It's about this and this, and this, and that's it. So let me know if you have any more questions about this or any other questions about self-publishing or heck, even traditional publishing, because I am traditionally published as well. Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean the world to me if you gave it a thumbs up to let YouTube know to share this with others. And also, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. It'd mean the world to me, and hey, it's free and all the cool kids are doing it. Now, don't let the learning stop here. There are two great videos right here. I can't choose which one for you to go to. I don't know, you might have seen them. You know, whichever one works best for you, let the learning continue. Pick one of those, and I'll catch you on the inside. And remember to write right.